Hi, everyone. I'm Becky Farrell, Research Lead and Programming Consultant for Dance Data Project. Our series, Moving Forces, Motherhood and Dance, is composed of rapid-fire conversations with mothers in varying roles in the dance field. Today, I'm so excited to be joined by the fabulous Taryn Cashalk-Russell, who has a long history of being an incredible leader in the dance field and is currently the director of the 92NY Harkness Dance Center. So Taryn, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited to have this conversation with you today. So since it's rapid fire, let's just jump in. Um, at what point in your career did you become a mother? Well, uh, it was a different point than I had wanted. Uh, I thought that I was going to be able to try to get pregnant while I was still performing. And uh, I was with a touring company. I was dancing with my second company, uh, Hubbard Street Dance Chicago. And as luck, luck would have it, uh, touring didn't work so well with trying to get pregnant. So <laughs> uh, you know, maybe you have to be in the same place at the same time. Right. <laughs> um, I think there are probably a, a couple other factors, but eventually I, I made the decision that I was going to stop performing. Hmm. And I stopped performing in December and three months later, uh, and I, at that point, three months later, I had already started resetting works and I was back in kind of the rehearsal studio helping yeah. out the company, but I was also going to school. Uh, so that's when I got pregnant. My body went, oh, we have space. And so We're there ready. you go. <laughs> so it's, it's a very strange thing because I got pregnant right after I decided to stop performing. Mm. Um, and then by the time I had my child, I was already back in the studio and I was becoming a director. So wow. it was right, they were born at the same time, um, my directorship or having that kind of role in the studio and a yeah. mother. New beginnings, right? At the same Very time. Very new beginnings. <laughs> yeah. happening in there. So, well, I, yeah, I was gonna, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was, was going to say that actually I didn't, I think um, I have to take a beat here to say that I don't think I would have become a director when being a new mother if uh, my sister did not give me a piece of very invaluable advice, uh, which was, you know, I was like, how can I do this? I'm, I'm having a new child. This is not right. what I was considering. You know, right. how, how, how is this possible? And she basically said, just because you haven't seen someone else do it doesn't mean you can't do it yourself. 100%. And I bring that up as many times as I can because I re I really needed someone to give me that permission or just to, to support me in making that decision. Yep. Um, and it was a really, really important decision. So I always give her credit for that. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. I think that more people just need to hear that and put that story out there. Great. So barriers. What did you encounter? Oh, goodness. Um, well, I mean, I think, again, going back to I hadn't seen anyone do it. So right. there weren't archetypes that I could follow. There weren't kind of structured pathways mm. for new mothers specifically um, and, and, as directors. I didn't yeah. see it. I didn't see it. And um, and in fact, very much the opposite, the generation right above me, I thought what I did see was either a lot of uh, women who had chose not to have families and then right. pursue, you know, directorial yeah. positions or positions yeah. of power, or they decided to stop and become parents. And so I had those, there were a lot of clarity mm. in those two ways, but um, the the middle ground didn't really, I didn't have anybody that I could see to use. Um, and so I think that that really was a barrier in the way that I had to kind of forge new pathways. I had right. to figure out what my own ground rules were and kind of uh, figure it out as I went along. Absolutely. I mean, that brings me into my next question about like support systems. So if you were trying to like forge this new path, there probably weren't systems of support in place. Are you starting to see them now? Um, has the field changed the way we're thinking about mothers and dance? Absolutely. I, I think that, again, one of the beautiful things about uh, the the field that I was in when I did become a mother was, you know, it's a it's a very flexible space, you know, the studio. Right. And yeah. there's a lot of people that are very nurturing and caring. So yes. there were younger students, there were people in the building that were always willing that if I had to bring my child with me, right. you know, to kind of let that happen. There had been dancers that had become parents hmm. and in various stages so you know again there was and it wasn't that there were set up structures to support that yet but right. it had right. happened so at least people had seen that yes. child is in the corner of the room you know so so there was a little bit of that happening and so creating space for that people were yeah. willing there was a lot Absolutely. of willingness mm -hmm. um, a lot of understanding and I will say that 
there were some male uh, directors and counterparts that I had who had families and they were extremely helpful. Uh, right. And also even again, if their um, the way that their parenting went wasn't exactly mm -hmm. how it, mine, For did, yours, yep. but they were still, there was this um, understanding. They knew mm. what I'd been through, you yep. know, and I think that, uh, and they wanted me there. And I think that was, that's a really important, important part of taking on a role in leadership yep. when you have children is knowing your worth. And because yeah. these individuals wanted me in this space, they also yep. understood that I was a new parent. And so yeah. those two things were connected. They were not separate. Absolutely. Oh, that's such a good way to put it. That's so great. Yeah, you're not you're not separate beings in that way. Like you're a mother in there, whether you have yeah. your child with you or not in a rehearsal process. Yeah. Absolutely. So bringing it, thinking about like the male perspective or those that are male presenting, how can we encourage and support partners to play an equal role in parenting? And oftentimes it's unbalanced, especially with newborns who really rely <laughs> on their mothers more yeah. than maybe a male um, identifying partner. So how can we encourage some equality when it comes to uh, parenthood partnerships? Well, I'm seeing, again, some of this uh, now, which is encouraging. Again, people taking, uh, everyone taking leave, parental leave. So yeah. not just, yes. you know, women taking, you know, they take right. three months and then sometimes they bookend it with the partner then taking their three months afterwards. And like that real kind of um, e equality, like you're saying, yes. or that, that there's that expectation. I think that's a really big thing. Mm. And again, as time is shifting and changing, and I know that there are now individuals that I'm, you know, that are 20 years younger than me that are having kids now too. And right. their world and their archetypes are now different. I think yeah. that my own relationship, you know, are like the, the people that were above us, you, there weren't enough examples. There right. weren't, you know, and I think that that's one of those things that um, specifically, at least with my own partnership with my husband, he, mm -hmm. there aren't that many examples of men who took off time to care right. take. For their, yeah. especially when there was specifically if there is, you know, two different parents. I think there's a yeah. lot of different things that people are single parenting yep. and, you yep. know, that makes a difference. But mm -hmm. if there are two parents in the mix, there is a there had been an expectation that uh, everything falls a little bit more to the one side than it does the other. Correct. And so I think shifting that expectation, I, I want to say that I actually think that the pandemic um, created a whole new possibility that if we can keep it fluid, uh, we yeah. should, which is that people can work from home. So absolutely, all of a sudden, it's not, well, the expectation is that I'm in the office. Well, the expectation was always that everyone was in the right. office. Right. But some of us always default defaulted to being the person that yep. had to caretake. Yep. Um, and so now if we can kind of equalize that, like mm -hmm. that's something that can happen for everyone. I think that that would be hugely beneficial. Absolutely. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. And especially not always relying on um, the mother if something happens at school or any of that, like it could be a shared responsibility, I think is really beneficial there. So are there additional ways companies, venues, dance service organizations, studios can really advocate and support dance moms? Yeah, I think that that's a great question. I, I wish I had like the perfect, you know, I, really, I, I, think, that, I think that flexibility is a big one. I think yes. flexibility and I think that um, another thing at least I found once I became a parent is really respecting and valuing one's time. Because mm -hmm. when you're a parent, I don't, I really don't know. I'm going to go ahead and speak from a working mom standpoint Yeah. Um, again, because that's, that's what I identify as, but I don't know any working moms that willingly sit idle at their jobs when they're not with their children. Like almost your time becomes that much mm. more valuable. If you're not mm. going to be with your family, yeah. then what you're doing has to really um, be making a difference. So I think yeah. that again, between the flexibility and valuing one time, one's time, mm. if you know, it's, it's just small things that didn't used to exist, which I think yep. are now changing again because of the pandemic, which yep. is, you know, well, that needs to be done here. Well, I can do it, but I can do it two hours from now. And the reason, exactly. I, you know, like was those yep. kinds of small shifts yep. I think really make a difference. And then I'm going to say that, of course, if you're still dancing, there's some non-negotiables, you know, like if you're dancing yeah. and you're in a studio, that's just like, you know, you're in a theater. There's very specific yep. um, time availability that you have to be there. Yeah. Um, so then I think in that case, it really is having some sort of 
uh, caretaking uh, mm. collective something. Yeah. And I feel like those are sort of really system. difficult moments. Yeah, a system mm -hmm. that when things become dire, that there's other things to fall on. Again, it's, you know, other systems that aren't the United States, other countries, other places, they, yep. they build those in from when, exactly. you know. Exactly. And we don't, we don't have that. I mean, everyone's always scrambling at the last minute for childcare when something yeah. goes difficult. Wouldn't it be great if that's something that companies would have during like show weeks and tech weeks yeah. or something that could just be kind of built in and built into budgets, right? Because we know that's where people's values really lie is in their yeah. budget. Like what is, what's the line item for these things? Yeah, I think that is the future. We've been hearing a lot about the, the childcare aspect when you're still trying to even go to conferences, when you're in rehearsals or when you're in a tech week. Yeah, that seems to be the, the biggest barrier still. So Dance Data Project, what can we do to keep advocating for mothers in the dance field? How can we be helpful? I think it's just keeping the conversation moving forward. And I think that that's, yeah. you know, one of the things you guys are doing really beautifully is you are, you know, keeping the conversation at the front. You're just making sure that it's not falling behind. And I think that uh, to this point, it, you know, if we're going to continue to advance and look mm -hmm. at all people in, you know, in the arts yeah. and how you can support all different, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, there, there's so many things in there. I mean, mothers, yeah. mothers goes like, you know, there's a thousand different exactly. of what a mother <laughs> might need, you know? And so yes. I think that, um, yeah, I just think that keeping the conversation moving forward and also not assuming, I think something else, um, at least I'm personally bad with is taking on too much responsibility. And so right. again, I think that uh, without speaking generically i think mothers mm -hmm. that tend to work are a little bit overachieving anyway and think that they right. can accomplish everything and right. again when you're just looking at um, sustainability and yeah. have anything you want to make sure that people's energy yep. time all of those things yeah. can be replenished so that they continue to being vibe you know to making vibrancy in your workplace absolutely Absolutely. Well, thank you, Taryn. This has been so wonderful. And thank you to everyone who's watching. We will have more Moving Forces interviews headed your way soon. Thank you. Thank you.